Welcome in, Iowa Hawkeye fans, to another episode of the Hawkeye Tailgate Report. I'm Luke Myers. We got Sam and Joey here this week. No Austin Myers. So our anonymous guest, Space Cowboy, is live on the show this week. Space Cowboy, how you doing? Oh, not too shabby. How about yourself? Oh, it's all right. We're good. We're doing all right. How about you, boys? How you doing? I got a headache, but I'm going to power was... through. My uh, skin's kind of dry, so. Uh, yeah, um, Joey, you still worried about <laughs> that? Uh, those guys that broke into a house close to you guys last night, still at large. You worried about that at all? Yeah, the doors are locked. If that's what you're wondering. Uh, got a gun? <laughs> Just kidding. No, um, I might have to go pick up a Glock. <laughs> got a Glock in my Rari. Um, all right, so we're gonna talk about the Illinois game. Final impressions of Stanley, what senior will miss most, and obviously we're going to talk shit about Nebraska. Uh, and then we got some basketball topics to cover, and we're going to give you our top three Thanksgiving foods, being that it's Thanksgiving week. So uh, we're just going to get right into it here. Uh, I'll start the Illinois recap. Wasn't an exciting game. The offense looked better than most games this year. We had over 300 yards passing. The rushing game was stagnant once again. Uh, Stanley made some good throws. I know a lot of people are still bitching about him online because he missed a couple of throws, but he also made some very, very impressive throws. Uh, the defense looked good once again. Big Nuts had a shaky start but came through with four field goals late. Young Drip God is now one of the three finalists for the National Kicker of the Year Award. Uh, and all in all, I was pretty happy with the performance. It's uh, not the Illinois team we've been bodying over the last couple of years, so uh, it's a quality team, and Came out with a nice win. I thought it was funny after the game that the Illinois players said that, uh, I don't remember their exact quote, but they gave us the game basically. Like, what? <laughs> yeah, like I was never in doubt that we were going to win the game. Like, it was. No, not at all. But... Whatever you got to do to change the narrative in your favor and make yourselves feel better, yeah, go ahead and do it. But it's just not the case just be at happy all. happy you didn't lose by seven touchdowns again. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, yeah, sixty-three to nothing. Hey, Illinois is... lost their Super Bowl this week. No, that's nine touchdowns. Yikes. Yeah, no. Nah, uh, but Illinois is a bowl eligible squad, and they can get to seven wins here with a win this week against Northwestern, which they should get. So props to Lovey Smith for kind of right in the ship there. After I remember last year on the podcast, after we beat them sixty-three to nothing, the next Monday. Lovey Smith got an extension, and I actually laughed out loud at that when it happened because I thought, oh, like, we just absolutely murdered this team, and apparently getting murdered translate to getting a new contract. Well, that's what these schools don't understand. They just go through coach and coach and coach. you got to have some sort, of, some sort of stability or else things will never, like, turn around, ever. And you got to take the good with the bad. That's why Pat Fitzgerald's not even on the hot seat this year. Yeah, well, I mean, he took him to the Big Ten title game last year. I think he bought himself a lot longer than just this year after what happened last year in Evanston. Space Cowboy, what do you think about the game? Um, apologies if I repeat something. I lagged out there for the last two minutes, so I have no <laughs> idea what you guys are talking about. <laughs> but uh, I was a little frustrated. You know, you got to get some touchdowns down the red zone. But Big Nuts... After a couple shaky kicks, uh, he adjusted, which was good to see because uh, he's kind of our lead source of points, which is embarrassing, but also good, I guess. But uh, At least he's not missing the field goals. Yeah. yeah. You know what really sucks, though? If he would have made those two field goals he missed, that would have given him six field goals in the game, and he would have only needed like four for the record. The NCAA. Yeah. I thought he still... Um, I thought he still did only need four to tie. Ah, uh, uh, let me pull up here. I'll double check, but I thought he needed like ten or something. Have, I thought of ample opportunity. Actually, Nebraska sucks so bad. We will probably just score <clears throat> on the first play every time we have the ball. So he won't even get a chance. Yeah, nah, I don't know. I think I think our offense will stall on the twenty plenty of times. I don't think so. <laughs> this is Brian Ferentz's statement game. He hates the Huskers more than we do. Uh, mm. yeah, that's. I, I will say after after Duncan's after his second miss, he when he kind of short legged it and like absolutely pissed knuckled it. I've <laughs> seen NFL kickers like 
has they've had their careers end because they can never come back from that. And he went back and hit three more field goals, so that was good yeah. for him. That was big. Yeah, uh, it was a good day. Also, shout out Sam Laporta uh, showing up once again. He is going to be a stud. He is going to um, be so good. Didn't I say he's going to be the best player in that class? Yeah, but keep I'm sleeping. St- I'm still yeah, he keep sleeping. I'm not saying he's going to be the best player in that class because Tyler Goodson is still here. Sleep. Are you saying Tyler Goodson is not going to be as good? Tyler Goodson is good. That's just saying how good Sam Laporte is going to be. And he was the third rated tight end in that class. Who that we? Uh, I I saw his like, a week or two before signing day. I watched his film. I was like, why does this guy not have more offers? He's six seven and can run like a deer. And yeah. he incredible hands. Uh, Technically, to be able to run like a deer, don't you have to have four legs? <laughs> he does. <laughs> Nah, he just he has two lo- legs and then he has two penises. Ooh, <laughs> wow! So we got big Here's nuts and big penises. penises. Yeah. I didn't say big penises. I said two penises. Uh, another note from this game: got to talk about Epi. He had another solid performance, and he's starting to climb up the draft board. But there was some uh, chatter after the game, and I saw something that a lot of people think he's going to return to the program, which. What do you guys think about that? I kind of have a feeling he might also because his like he's not just some recruit. His father was a Hawkeye and like all this stuff. I've thought that all year for the same reasons that you just said. I just don't think that. I, I think he knows that he'll have plenty of years to play in the NFL. I don't think money is particularly a concern of his right now, and I think he loves the University of Iowa. So I wouldn't be shocked to see him stay. Yeah, and Worfs. Really, I was just going to say, I think Wirfs is gone. Because, yeah. I, I mean, we've seen what what happened with Alaric Jackson this year. Jackson was a first-round draft pick, but he's kind of dropped off due to injuries. And what other reasons? Why not? Uh, I think Wirfs, he's going to get a big payday. He's a first-round p- draft pick, I think, regardless. So I think he, he's going to go and get his money. I think Jackson comes back, and uh, I think Epi is going to come back, too. What about Gino? That's a tough one. I don't think he had a good enough. I said, I said, I said preseason that I thought Epi was going to come back. I think he's going to go now. But Gino's got that next level speed. Ah, Gino's instincts. I love him. Gino's instincts are better than Amani Hooker's. Yeah, they are. Oh, definitely. And he hits just as hard as some of the other safeties that have rolled through in recent time. And yeah, I don't know about that one though. I'd have to look at his numbers again, and because I, I don't it has nothing to do with his numbers. His safeties don't put up like huge numbers. It's it's going to be what scouts say, basically, and they're going to tell him, hey, just like Amani, you got a chance. You're going to get drafted. So, and he's going to go. I think. Hmm. Well, I really hope he doesn't, but I could totally see it. He's just a killer in the secondary. So if he, if he does go, that's good for him. If if not, oh, oh well. Does anybody have anything else from this game they want to talk about? Otherwise, we'll move along here. When all you got to keep it strong, move, move along, along, move, move along, along. Like I know like you. Like I know you do. I know you. Okay. Uh, okay, so we're going to move on to – Probably the most bipolar player that fans feel about on this team. It's Nate Stanley. You either like him or you don't. Uh, everybody knows I've been a Nathan Stanley apologist for three, going on three years now. Uh, almost done with three years. I, I can't believe people were complaining after his game the other day. 300 yards, no touchdowns, whatever. But he, he managed the offense well, moved the ball up and down the field, I thought, fairly decent. Um, and overall, his career, I think... Uh, he's, he's. I don't know. He doesn't deserve nearly the hate that a ton of people give him. Joey, listen. I, I thought he played a decent game on Saturday. I'll be the first to call him out when I think he played a shitty game. I do think he had a couple of passes on Saturday still that he probably should have made. Um, it's not like we lit up the scoreboard offensively, um, but I mean he played a, a good enough game. 
And I do think he has the skill sets to still be an NFL quarterback if he could just rein that in a little bit and hit those passes he needs to. But so I, And I don't dislike him. I'm not rooting against the guy. I just, I'll call him as I see him. He's for sure going to get drafted in like the top four rounds. 100%. I'm, I'm sure he will, just on intangibles. Yeah, he's an NFL body. I mean, <clears throat> have you listened to an Iowa game on ESPN this year where they haven't made the comparison? Oh, this is Ben Roethlisberger. Like, oh, except well, he that doesn't rape women. Yeah. That comparison sucks, too. I don't know. I just don't like that comparison. But, yeah, they couldn't shut up about it. Who was it? Matt Millen said it like four times. Well, they get stuck God, in yeah, it. You just hate when announcers just like – gawk over your players getting going to the nfl isn't that the worst Ugh. well i just hate it because espn is the worst broadcasters in america because they get fixated on one thing for like if a team has one thing they'll just ride that the whole time it's stupid no i'm not saying it's... i i and i'm not saying i don't like it when they compare our players nfl players i just don't think big ben's that great of a comparison for nate stanley who would yeah, be a Big com- Ben can call an audible at the line and isn't a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> who, who I still have not seen an audible call this year that has not been a run. It's like he's scared. He's scared to fucking Dude, do what he wants to do. Like this, every year, one time, one time, call an audible and run a play action to that short side of the field. It's a guaranteed touchdown. Every year, we we never have passes out of audibles. It's like rare when we do. It's not like it's just him. And also, I have another bone to pick. So, people love Drew Tate and his sophomore year. But I watched, on the way back from the Northwestern game, my cousin's husband had the, what was it, the 2003 season, I think? Four. 2004 season on DVD. And we watched the whole thing on the way back. I'm here to say, love Drew Tate. He made some horrible passes that year, too. And people just seem to forget that because he has... The, one, probably the biggest play in the history of the program. Uh, I, I, it just aggravates. Drew Tate was mobile. Hey, do not knock Nate Stanley's mo- mobility. I'd still beat him in a forty. Okay, also, but Drew, Tate, Drew Tate's running back was Sam Brownlee, the goat. <laughs> no, but like people he, forget that he made bad passes <laughs> too. Like it just happens. <laughs> But people seem to ride Stanley for some specific, for no specific reason, and it's going to follow him for the rest of his career. People are going to be hot or cold on him. There's no in between. You can't. You you can't call each game as you see it, Luke. You know, you don't have to be. If he has a bad game, you don't have to defend him to the grave every time. You can say he I'm had sure a bad he, game. Sure he, I have said I'm he sure has a bad a game. Son in law. What? What, you what space? He'd be a great son-in-law, but, I mean, I wouldn't want him to be my own kid. <laughs> I don't know. He, I'm, We're going to miss Nate Stanley. I know we have some good prospects coming up here through the system. Petrus next year, 26 touchdowns, airing it out. So you're saying he's going to have Nate Stanley's best season. It's going to be year. the Tyler Goodson show next year. Oh, yeah, but they're going to run out of shotgun. They're going to mix it up. They're going to throw it. Wildcat. Out. Peyton uh, Mansell split out wide. Mansell's gone. I'd bet money. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I just think it's shitty that Nate Stanley's going to have this negative rap with him for the rest of his time. He could have three bowl wins. He's going to have three at eight plus win seasons. He only lost to Wisconsin as his rivalry games unless he drops a stinker at Nebraska last or next weekend. Uh, but had the best wide receiver receiving core in Iowa history. I would still uh, DJK and McNett has something to say about that. Yeah, and uh, oh, Tony okay, Moyaki. Listen, listen, Terry listen. Tross. He had Hawkinson and Fant we had last we year. had this talk. He had Hawkinson and Fant last year. Now he has Brandon Smith for part of the season. Amir Smith, Marset, Oliver Martin, who's criminally underused. This so is, who are we going to blame? The play callers? Season. Are we going to blame the call, play callers or the quarterback? Why even mention Oliver Martin? He's literally has caught like two passes from the season. Because he's 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 a stud and he doesn't even play. That speaks to how good our other receivers are. Dude, yeah. our playbook is so complex. So he just hasn't picked up on it. Shut up! Shut up! Our, when our <laughs> audibles are freaking stretch runs to the short side of the field, it can't be too complex. We just need to audible into that um, 15-yard QB sneak every time. 
<laughs> what am I drinking? An ice cold uh, Arnold Palmer. Rip. Ooh, that calls Rip for, Arnie. Uh, are are they one of our sponsors? You should probably mix those in earlier we'll, we'll rather tr- than later again. We'll try. <laughs> Shut up. Yeah, we'll work on that. Um. <laughs> so next question here: What senior are you gonna miss most from this team? Who would like to say Brady Ross? Okay, Joey. Why? Yeah, Brady. I don't know. I just he's a nice little rock in our our backfield. Good protector of men. And I just like Brady. Plus, he's a nominee for the Low Man uh, Award. Uh, from pardon my take barstool sports so get out there and vote for him but uh they yeah. they nominated 38 people hey he was one of the 38 <laughs> so gotta roll with it how Pull about you the, the few the proud how about you sam sleep dalton <laughs> yeah uh michael sleep dalton just kidding uh Peyton mansell for sure since he's a senior because <laughs> he's not gonna be back next year really no the answer is nate stanley and i'm not you guys are idiots so, I'm. Do each their own, Sam. I'm actually gonna say some that I, I'm Christian Welch. That dude. Oh yeah. He is super valuable on defense, and I think the team is he though because he got hurt and couldn't play in the Wisconsin game. We really needed him. If he was really that valuable, he would have played. And we gave up 24 points. Yeah, this is a stinger. That was the yeah. most points we'd given up all year. So, I mean, Christian Welch is so valuable, and he had a well, great game against Illinois the other day. Also, forgot yeah, about this this play from the game I want to drop. Um, he didn't get on the field until fifth year. Hey, he was still super valuable this year. But uh, I know Sam tweeted. Am I really about- delayed? I feel like I'm- yes, y- yes, you are. I don't know. I think I'm it's just on Luke. Um, Can you guys like hurry up? Uh, but uh, the play I want to talk about from the other day was something a blitz that I hadn't seen from an Iowa team in a long time, and I saw Sam tweet about it. It was almost like an engage eight, where we had everybody and their mother coming at the quarterback. What was it? It was a big play in the game too, like right before half or whatever. Got uh, it was in the second half. Was it? It was a yeah. big play nonetheless, and got a huge sack out of it. Pushed him out of field goal range. Uh, Phil, Phil had to blow the dust off the, the playbook to get to that one. <laughs> yeah, that was wild. We had both cor- or both safeties hammering down on the line of scrimmage. Oh, man, if we could see that once a game, I'd be so happy because it is super effective when you run it. I mean, once every four years when you run it, sure, yeah, it's going to be great because nobody sees it coming. But if you could sneak it into your playbook a little more often, oh, boys. The thing that frustrates me most about Phil Parker. The thing that frustrates me the most about Phil Parker is I remember when Hitchens, Kirksey, and Morris were seniors against Nebraska. He blitzed against Tommy Armpunt Armstrong like two out of the four downs every drive, and it just demoralized him. And the fact that I know that we could do that more just pisses me off because I want to see more blitzes. Oh, absolutely, and it. I mean, and then there's stats like teams that have not given up more than thirty points in a game. Iowa and Kentucky are both tied for the lead at fourteen. It's like, okay, well, maybe you know what you're doing, Phil, but like, just blitz a little more to appease me. Oh yeah, well, I mean, our point per game totals like what'd you say? Probably around fourteen or so. No, no, no. That's how many games in a row we haven't given up thirty points. Oh well, it's probably we're tied with Kentucky. But uh. Yeah, now just throw in a little blitz every now and then. Uh, our secondary has struggled at times this year, so help them out a little bit. Throw a blitz. Force the cause. Hopefully get an interception. All right, boys. Moving on here. We got our final rivalry game of the season. It is the hero game, Heroes game uh, against Nebraska in Lincoln this Friday at 1.30, I believe, on Fox. Yes. So... Nebraska absolutely piss pounded Maryland this past weekend. I love to see that because it's just getting their hopes up for a huge meltdown and them missing bull eligibility for the third straight year, I believe. So, what are we thinking for this game? There's no chance we lose, right? Right. I literally just read the oh, Nebraska no. board like while we were sitting here talking, and they are so optimistic. It's comical. Well, I. I don't know, like yeah, who? The, I didn't even see what the final score ended up being of that Maryland game the other night, but it was like 50, 51 to seven, or forty-two to seven, or something like that. Fifty-four, I thought. I don't know, something. Potato, tomato. I 
we're our defense is going to be able to control Martinez. We're I, it's just going to be Brandon Smith's back, Tyler Goodson, clearly the starter. Uh, Nate Stanley in his final regular season game. Just give me it all. The Hawks, Taylor Martinez is going to get hurt in the second quarter. Adrian Martinez. So is Taylor Martinez. <laughs> okay. Uh, but I, the Hawks don't like to cover the spread that often. I think they're covering this weekend. Uh, we love to put up 50 burgers on Nebraska. Probably won't put up that much. Uh, but I'd say we're right around the 40 mark. So uh, Hawkeyes are going to roll into Lincoln. <clears throat> A lot of Tyler Goodson, I'd imagine. Uh, maybe let Nate Stanley throw the ball around just for a short while, being it's the last regular season game. But uh, what, it, Joey uh, and Space Cowboy, what do you think here? I can guarantee Nebraska is going to run the same defense that Illinois did. <laughs> just completely take the run game out, make them throw, because, I mean, shit, it worked. Illinois' rush defense sucked ass, and we couldn't do a damn thing. Yeah. So why would they not do that? Because it's they're similar defenses. Nebraska's rush defense is god awful too. Yeah. So, uh, what? Okay. So what do you think for Stanley then? You think he puts together a good game? Oh, I don't know. Hostile atmosphere uh, on the road. Weather, weather's supposed you, to suck too. You think a, a senior would be able to handle that? But I just I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> Joey, I tell you what. I think they're going to win. I hope they just do enough early so that we can um, <clears throat> just get the ball first and goal and have Big Nuts kick it a few times, get him some field goals so he can break that record in the second half. So, Are you going to watch got, a game, Joey? Am I going to? I don't know if I can stay awake. Well, uh, here's the thing. <laughs> so Joey's going to Minneapolis on Friday morning, and uh, yeah. so he'll be watching it up there if he is. But that's where Either. college game day's at, so. Yeah, per- thoughts and prayers for me. I'm running a 5K in Minneapolis. Ew, why but I'm also- first of all, why in the hell are you running a 5K? Because I, I, I don't know, but I am. And then, well, I'll probably run most of it. No guarantee on all of it. But then, we're gonna. I think we're going to go to try and heckle some people at game day. So, that'll be fun. Um, alrighty. Joey, did you have some Nebraska jokes you wanted to sneak in here? Are you going to do something with our sponsors, Luke, or are you just going to wait till the end and do them at the same time got, again? We still got, oh, fine, I'll throw in, oh, Joey, pump the brakes, we're doing a sponsor read. Skirt, skirt! Uh, are you looking to add your logo to your new business apparel or uniform for your business? Contact Brian Myers at Safeguard Eastern Iowa today. Safeguard is one of the largest providers of promotional products and branded apparel in the U.S. and carries all the top brands and clothing. Safeguard can have your logo applied using the perfect technique to make your logo stand out. Shirts, hats, jackets, uniforms, and scrubs just scratch the surface of what Safeguard can source for you. Call Brian Myers at 815-535-6840, and he'll help you find the item that's exactly what you're looking for. That's 815-535-6840. All righty, Joey. Safeguard replace. Safeguard replace. That's not it. All right, so I, I don't have any jokes. I got the Urban Dictionary. Is that what we're searching for here? Yeah, I mean, you can go with the Urban Dictionary read here if you want. Okay, I've got one. I mean, I've got a bunch, actually, so buckle in. This this is going to be a long one. But then I think Space Cowboy has one at the end. Is that correct, Space? That is correct. Also, I would just like to preface this with uh, this. I believe this is not child-friendly, so take a second you might here. fast forward two minutes. Yeah, fast forward yeah. a couple minutes or turn it down <clears throat> or ask your kid to leave the room. All right, go. Or just explain what all the bad words mean. Yeah. I mean, now, now is as good a time as any, I guess. Okay. You're going to learn today. Yeah. So first, we got Nebraska, a mythical place where supposedly there's a lot of corn and a college team. However, these are yet to be proven true. Nebraska, state where there are only extremely ugly people. The women even have beards. (laughs) And then we have a sexual act, Nebraska snowball, a sex act in which you farmer blow onto your partner, wipe the farmer blow blow off with your beanbag, then your partner sucks on your beanbag. Oh, <laughs> I, I don't love that they refer to it as beanbag. But. Uh, ne- Nebraska sushi. 
<clears throat> oh, the act of eating the corn out of one's fecal matter with chopsticks. <laughs> Nebraska soft serve. A subset of the famed Cleveland steamer, a Nebraska soft serve is the act of defecating on the chest of one's sexual partner after undergoing a strict diet of nothing but corn for the last three days prior to intercourse. <laughs> <laughs> um, corn huskers. This one is just. This one is not uh, slamming them. It's just. It's just ironic. Nebraska's college collegiate football team, residing in Lincoln, changed their name from the Bug Eaters. This team was a very dominant in the 90s, winning three national championships in four years and playing the title game two more times and losing under Coach Tom Osborne. A very storied college football team that is currently in a slump. Any guesses as to when the, that one was written, where it said they were currently in a slump? Ooh. Uh, 2003. 2005. So that is quite the slump they've been in. Um, uh, corn husker after gorging on corn for about three days a person will take a horrifying dump into a strainer a corn husker will take the strainer full of corn blow and run steaming hot water over it thus washing all the steaming doo-doo away and that's all all that's left is husks of corn and the corn husker will eat them corn husker a gender-neutral term used to describe someone who wears running shoes with jeans. Just kind of a clean slam there. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then this one is just Lincoln, Nebraska. Lincoln, Nebraska is a great place to live full of friendly people. We are not hicks, all caps. We are not Jesus freaks either. And that one, the fact that we are not hicks and we are not Jesus freaks are all caps just says just the opposite. They are, in fact... Um, Hicks and Jesus Freaks. So that's all I got. Space Cowboy. All right, this one is definitely uh, rated X. Uh, <laughs> it's called the Nebraska Scarlet and Cream. Uh, the true colors of the Nebraska Huskers, or the act of vaginally fucking a girl while she's on her period during a Nebraska game. <laughs> After ejaculating inside of her, you just take two fingers from each hand and. And you wipe up the mixture of blood and jizz and put it under each eye like eye black. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> that my is... favorite is <coughs> my favorite. You, you, you used in context, dude. Is that blood and jizz all over our new couch? Playa, I gave Rachel a Nebraska scarlet and cream. No way. <laughs> Her boyfriend slash cousin Aaron is going to be pissed. <laughs> no, it's all good. He's a Husker fan too. Oh, no. Uh, I wonderful. really hope, I really hope the parents turned it off. There's no way anybody with parents is listening to this with their kids anyway. You obviously don't have kids. Well, They're listening to Trolls soundtrack. Uh, you you got too. me. <laughs> yeah, well, shoot. you better pick up a, a lawyer sponsor, an attorney. Or something. No, it, it's like that one. It's like that one video where uh, the lady comes and yells, yells in the car, and she's yelling at that chick in the back seat. My kids are listening to oh. kids pop. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what we need to do? We need to do an Iowa Urban Dictionary read. Mm. We'll, we'll do that. Uh, we'll save that for the, next week. The football wrap up season. Alrighty, you guys ready to get some basketball topics? Not really. All right. Before, yeah. Nah. Before the, we, the real sport. Before we do that, we're going to hit an ad from our final sponsor, Demer Oil, located in Dubuque <laughs> County. <laughs> That's where the, they got locations in Worthington, Monticello, and Holy Cross. DemerOilInc.com is their website. You're going to want to contact Steve and Toby Demer if you call their number, 800-433-3835. Uh, you can fill up on LP, gas, or oil. Uh, they do it all. Keep your house nice and warm this winter, so... Go ahead and give Steve and Toby a call at 1-800-433-3835. All right. Okay. I got got one thing. One thing. Um, We said we were going to space out our sponsors better. You just made a sandwich (laughs) with our sponsors and put just a slice of cheese between the bread. That's that's how I could best describe that. And it's like smegma cheese, too. Oh, gross. (laughs) All right. So, guys, back here. Let's get back. We're going to talk about the basketball team. So, Why? they have won. They beat Cal Poly, and uh, <laughs> uh, it wasn't pretty. They ended up winning by, like, mid-20s, I think it was. But 
Still wasn't a very good game. We had three guys go out with injuries. One of them is a season-ending injury. In case you didn't see on Twitter or Facebook today, uh, Jack Nunji done for the year with a torn ACL. Uh, Joe Wieskamp took a shot to the face in the first half, went out, and C.J. Frederick came up a little limpy as well. But they Wieskamp and Frederick came back in. So how are we feeling about the team right now? Not great, Bob. Does Brennan Kugel... Does Brennan Kugel have any eligibility left? I think he might. <laughs> uh, Joey? Colin. Well, funny funny you should ask, Luke. I'm feeling great about the team. They have only lost one game. They uh, clearly played terrible. They were, and DePaul shot out of their minds that game. And, I don't know, they just, Gars is, the, okay, think about it this way. They've been putting up 85, 90 points a game, and Joe Wieskamp hasn't shown up yet. I mean, yeah, we lost Nunji, which is awful. That sucks. <clears throat> Torn ACL, but he wasn't scoring either. So once you got to figure once Garza comes or not Garza, Garza is here. Once Wieskamp comes around, they're going to be really good offensively, especially with the emergence of C.J. Frederick, who is shooting the lights out, and he has such a pretty stroke. So she said. Yeah, uh, I I agree with you. I think we are fine right now. The DePaul loss looks less and less worse. Uh, they, I I told Iowa fans at the time like teams lose uh, early season games that they shouldn't. Like just tonight, Michigan State lost to Virginia Tech in the Maui Invitational. Like it just happens. Uh, Virginia. Yeah, Tech, but like Virginia Tech playing in the Maui Invitational, so they obviously don't suck. Uh, Virginia Tech lost their coach and their best player from last season, so it's not like. They were on the same level that they were last year. It's It just happens, you know? And DePaul's undefeated still right now. They got votes for the top 25 in the coaches' poll. Just like, pull. it's not a bad loss. And the, the defense is coming around, too. They, they, they've been playing. They're not playing good teams, but they have been playing much better defense. Well, I hope it, so. Quadrant four teams typically aren't known to <laughs> light up the scoreboard. Yeah, I yeah. Uh, they were playing. They weren't playing good defense the first couple of games. They're if they're we, actually like. If we beat any of the power five teams left in our non conference schedule, I will like shave a swastika into my head. Yikes! Sorry, well, that is a tough Wait. look. I don't think you'll be so, selling much coke doing that. Okay, so that's <laughs> that's um, Syracuse, Texas Tech, I Cincinnati. Say- Iowa State. So, you don't think we win one of those games? Thing. No, but it's probably not a good thing to say. Can we cut that out? <laughs> no, nope. it's Stan. It's Stan. Uh, I don't know. I think we can. I th- I still think we can beat Cincinnati, even though I believe Cumberland's still there. Uh, yes. I uh, Iowa State's going to be tough, but Syracuse, I think, is a winnable game. Uh, if we come away, Iowa, Iowa State can't shoot the three this year. Isaiah like, Moss just shoot. made a layup that never happened when he played for us. <laughs> okay, now I I do think we can beat Iowa State, but I think we got to play like our borderline perfect game in order to beat Iowa State. Like that's the same with Texas Tech too. Like we have to play flawless if we're going to be able to beat Texas Tech. Although. We've played perfect games against Iowa State and still lost in Hilton. So, <clears throat> yeah, but we've won Listen, in Hilton recent. Texas history Tech has. Texas when the Tech last has time we won in Hilton? Even worse teams than us this year. What, Joe? Texas Tech has played even worse teams than us this year. Texas Tech has played Eastern Illinois, Bethune Cookman, Tennessee State, and Long Island. I don't. I don't think that game's unwinnable. Uh, I. Definitely think we can beat Syracuse. Iowa State will be tough, and I definitely think we have a chance against Cincinnati. I would I would not be shocked at all if we won two of those games. Yeah, if we win two of those games, I'll be pretty damn happy about it. Because that I honestly really think if, if Garza doesn't get in foul trouble, we can beat Iowa State. They cannot shoot the three at all. But that's where Nunji's injury is huge now, because now our only depth at big man is. Creener and Garza. Yeah, Penzel's there, but he's still fairly undersized and can only go hey. left. Strategy. Penzel and McCaffrey, go fight the two best players for Iowa State right off the bat. <laughs> They're kicked out. We lose two shitheads. Now, even playing field. 
Yeah, I like that. Space, speaking of um, big man depth, you guys see that Tyler Cook put up 28 and 10 or something like that in the G League the other night? It's pretty nice. I think he's going to be good. Uh, he has to get a chance first and a consistent jumper. But, uh, okay, so we Luke, bo- what? We haven't won in Ames since. Uh, three, two, one. It's been a long time. <laughs> okay, sorry, I was wrong. But uh, okay. So where do we stand on the whole Joe Wee's camp situation right now? Hey, how'd you stop know talking about it on the small on the small toilet in Piazza? What? <laughs> how'd you know which stall I was in? Cause that's my that's mine. Uh, <laughs> get back on track here. Uh, so are we concerned about Wee's camp yet? No, stop talking about it. No, my, my level of concern for Wee's camp has not gone up at all. He doesn't realize that this team's a lot like Muscatine, and he's going to realize, oh, hey, I can do what I did in high school. Yeah. So, okay. I have concern for his aggression. Like, aside from the game against Cal Poly where he had the one drive to the hoop where he tried to kill the guy on the floor with a dunk, he was virtually non-existent that entire game. Yeah, I think he ended up with 10 points, but those were garbage time points late in the second half. I I, I am worried about that. Like, if he, if he had, two, like, half of Tucson's aggression, he would be a significantly more beneficial player this year for the team. But he's just not doing it right now. Mm. Nothing to worry about. He doesn't have to right now. He's not. I told you this. He's not showing his hand. He's waiting until he needs to against Texas Tech. He's going to put up 40. Joey, this isn't football with Kirk Ferentz where you can play Miami, Ohio week one and not show anything. Of course it is. We just did that against uh, Cal Poly and And all the other shit teams. Do you think he has kind of felt a little more pressure with the possibility of NBA in his future? Uh, No, I think Joe's cool as a cucumber. I don't think he feels pressure. I think life without Isaiah Moss and Tyler Cook is just coming to fruition. Yeah, I I can agree there. People underappreciated Moss. But uh, what do we think about Bohannon now, though? He didn't suit up the other night. It was said that was for rest. I think it's awesome because that definitely happened so he could still play in the Iowa State game. You guys know that, right? That was for sure the idea there. Really? And I saw an Iowa State fan say that on Twitter, thinking, oh, now he gets to play the Iowa game. And I was like, you know what? You're actually right. Like, that's probably why he did that. Why? Does but he only I, have one more game? No. he has, You can only play like nine games. So if he would have played every game up until then, he wouldn't have been able to play it. That would be something. Wow. If he goes out there and drops like a game-winning three or something just because he sat out this past game against Cal Poly. That would be so freaking funny. I would literally die. But I kind of have a sneaky suspicion he won't redshirt now either way because... uh, He's definitely going to redshirt. I think... Well, okay, this isn't going to make sense. You have Nico Hobbs, bro. Shut up. Ah, no. uh, uh, Freaking, what was I going to say? Oh, with Nunji's injury... We're going to lose depth off the bench. And, yes, I know that their positions don't translate to each other, but having the depth will still benefit them. Whereas if you're just stripping away a player completely, a player or two, that's really going to kill the team. Yeah, but everyone's back next year except for Creener. Like, just shut him down and bring him back next year. I don't know. I think... You think what? Yeah. Impression that Patrick, I was I was under the impression that Patrick was going to redshirt, but since Nunji got went out, I don't think he is. <clears throat> I think Patrick is going to have to play. No, he, no. What's going to happen? And this hurts. This hurts to say is, oh God, I'm going to throw up. <laughs> Riley Till is going to play more. Say, that could be true. Also, say what you want about Riley Till. He hustles. Like that chase down block <clears throat> yesterday against Cal Poly was something. I mean. He's. It's not like he's a horrible. He's not John Licklider out there. Let's like set the record straight. He's got with a hot that. sister. Eh. He's he's super athletic. He is like he can get he, up. He, 
I'm not as concerned about him he's... being out there as most people would be. Like, he shouldn't start, clearly. He shouldn't even be in, like, our eight-man rotation. But we get down towards the nine, ten spots on the bench. I have no problem with him being one of those spots. No, me either. I don't think he'd, he would bring much on offense. But defensively, and if Hustle was a stat, I think he'd be huge in that. So Yeah. Well, if you look at most of our team the last eight years, we probably lead the nation in hustle. <laughs> Bear. That makes me miss Nick. We have Michael. Uh, uh, okay. So <laughs> you guys want to put some score projections out here for this Texas Tech game on Thanksgiving? Um, I'm going to say it's going to be under 10 points. It's, it just feels like one of those games – that nobody's going to expect Iowa to win, and then they hang around, they hang around, or they get out to a big lead, and then just gradually blow it in the second half. But yeah, I think under ten points we'll probably lose. Eighty-six to seventy-three. Ooh, that was really close. Wait, who? Just to set Texas Tech. Yeah, that's what I figured. Um, I'm gonna. I was actually gonna go around there too. I think it's gonna be like a 15 point game, and we're gonna lose. I don't think it will be like the DePaul game where we're getting absolutely murdered the entire game. I think it will be in the ra- Yeah, I, 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 I like 86, 71. So I don't hate that. Uh, Sam stepped. Brandon have the boys ready, and we'll see. Sam stepped away for a second, but he's just picking up his laptop again. So once he puts his headset on, he's really dicking the dog right now. Uh, hey Sam. Sam, what's up? What's up? We just gave project or predictions for the game against Texas Tech. Score prediction. When do we play them? Thursday. Uh, um, in Las Vegas. Yep. Um, we'll lose by eight. Ah, uh, okay. So Joey. Seventy-two, sixty-four. Joey and uh, Sam went under 10 points. Me and Adam went over 10 points. So we we consensus think it's going to be a loss, so a win would be just a hell of a way to cap off a of Thanksgiving. Uh, but now, being that it is Thanksgiving, we're going to power rank our top three Thanksgiving foods here. Okay, so Joey and Space Cowboy, what do you think? What are your power, or top three Thanksgiving foods here? Uh, can Ooh, we just go sure. one at a time? Sure. Start at three. Hold on. Let me get a piece of All right, paper. here my... I, I really like the uh, the turkey as my third spot. I only eat turkey very much. I thoroughly enjoy it. I thoroughly enjoy the leftovers. Uh, but I just think that it's a really underappreciated meat. Underappreciated poultry, if you will. And can imagine can we, having turkey count? in your top three at all. Oh, don't okay. say ham. Ham sucks. Okay, Space Cowboy. Well, I got a question. So turkey is going to be my three as well, but can like a little, like just a dab of gravy be included on it, or is that count as a spot? No, we'll count. Yeah, it. we we'll don't want you choking it. on it. Yeah. We don't need it going down dry. Yeah, because I mean it can get pretty dry, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so that's what you're going with. Hey, we yeah, need to pick this up three. a little bit. All right, go, go, Sam. Pick, put your three out there. Cranberry sauce, oh, number three. Dude, what are you, some kind of psychopath? <laughs> That's tough. Need a, that is tough. You need to be institutionalized. Two, and then ham at one with some Hawaiian rolls as well. Wait, what? Green bean casserole at two? And, and Grandma's ham. recipe. And Isaiah Moss just hit a three. Uh, okay. <sighs> uh, my number three uh, is... We're going to go with uh, Butterfinger Dessert. It's kind of a my family type situation, but it's not a it's not a holiday unless it's there. L- let me just describe this stuff to you. I think we've actually no, described No, I don't have time for you to describe it. It's Continue. angel food cake with like a sticky whipped cream and <laughs> Butterfingers on it. Oh, my God. It's so good. Uh, all righty. So that's my number three. Joey, what's your number Sounds two? Sounds like type 2 diabetes in a scoop. <laughs> Joey, what's no. your <laughs> Number two is going to have to be, um, ooh. Three, I'm gonna go two. I'm going to go with green bean casserole. Ooh. It's, it's good stuff. I don't know how you don't like it. I don't understand the, the hate for I green don't, bean I casserole. I don't hate it. It's just not my favorite. I, I don't want to make love to it like Sam does, but it's good. 
Green bean casserole, if made correctly, is amazing. All right. Even if it's t- shittily made, it's still good. Space Cowboy? Uh, my number two is, uh, I'm a big bread guy, so uh, biscuits or Hawaiian roll, any kind of bread, really. Any kind of bread? Wow, really adventurous yeah. there. Yeah. Um, My number two is going to be ham. I'm going to go with ham there, I feel. Uh, that with some of my grandpa Johnny's horseradish. Next, I'd pick that maybe over any food in the world. So, uh, Joey, what do you got at number one? If you pick that over any food in the world, how is it only number two? I said almost <laughs> pick it. Almost <laughs> pick it. Um, I'll go ahead and go with sweet potato casserole as number one, and that is undisputed champion. Oh, tweet that, please, so I can quote you and throw you under the bus. Sam's never had it, obviously. <laughs> uh, sweet potatoes are the worst thing in the world. Yeah, yeah but it, it has a ton of brown sugar on top of it and pecans. It's fucking delicious. It's literally no. like my two least favorite things in the world. All right, like brown sugar? No, pecans. Space Cowboy? <laughs> Number one, real mashed potatoes. Not Okay, Stin has this weird, like food fetish where he only likes instant potatoes because he's a fucking sociopath. I think they're good, um, though. Real mashed potatoes, the best in the world. Fluffy. Oh, fuck yeah. Uh, I agree. Those are in your pants. And I, that, well, I mean, it's mixed it in with the potatoes. And <laughs> I'm actually going to roll with Joey on this one. My number one is sweet potato pie. Uh, you a. guys are literally... Potato casserole. Sam, I invite people. you to come to our house for Thanksgiving and eat some. I'm not going. Sweet I actually potato don't have pie. plans on Thanksgiving, so I will. Debut? Sam, you, yeah, Sam, you did cranberry from. sauce. You do cranberry sauce. Nobody, cranberry nobody sauce in the history of the world has liked that. Tweet it. I feel like that was just that was just tweet hot take. <laughs> I'll, I'll tweet yeah, it. Yeah, you're the Skip Bayless it. of Thanksgiving foods. No, but uh, sweet potato pie, just phenomenal dish. I could eat it all day long. It's awesome. That is one thing I would take over my Grandpa Johnny's ham. Joey, thanks for being a critic about that. Uh, but anybody want to toss out a couple honorable mentions? Otherwise, we'll wrap up the show here. Uh, um, if you don't make a sandwich with your meat at Thanksgiving, you're an idiot. Yep. Fair, fair. Bush light. Ooh, bush yeah, light. That... <clears throat> I wanted yeah, to... we... I, I want to throw an oriental salad out there. I know that's going to sound... Not great, but yep, I'm hanging up. <laughs> now the sal- I, I love You look like you haven't salad. had a salad in your entire life. Oh, you are such a jerk, Sam. <laughs> you are such a jerk. What a dick. Uh, all right, we're gonna wrap up the show. <laughs> Night's wait, over. Wait, 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 no, no, I gotta expose you really quick for something. Me? Yeah. So, Sam, you can go if you want. You don't have to stay around for this. It's gonna be long. Uh, no. So the MLB is doing the MLB is doing their all MLB team and fans get to vote. Luke sent me and my cousin his ballot tonight and left Mike Trout off of it. You just do all Twins players? Because I hate people who do that shit. No, I didn't. I uh, my outfielders had, were the MVP of the NL, Cody Bellinger, Ronald Acuna. You literally have no argument over not having Mike Trout there. That's Ron- like yeah. Ronald like, Acuna. The- I, Ronald Acuna was on it and not Mike Trout. I, I don't care about Bellinger and Yelich. Guys. Those are obviously long in there. You need to have – Mike Trout is the best player, like, ever, including this year. This was this year was no exception. That's like making, like, a top five bat- college basketball <laughs> players list of all time and not including Jim or Fredette. Uh, sh- yeah. <laughs> shut up. No. Uh, Acuna, okay, he was on a winning team. I do hold that Mike Trout's team never wins. I understand it's a team sport, but I, in my eyes... Literally team, the most team sport there I, is. I know, but a team player... <laughs> well, in that case, you shouldn't be taking a $430 million contract where you're crippling your team. Ho! Oh, so oh, like, loyal! But he's like not Kevin loyal, Joey. Yeah. Joey, if the, the New, York, if the okay. New yeah. York Yankees yeah. offered him $430 million... And they Luke, couldn't. He, they don't have that Luke, kind of money. What did Kevin Durant do that you despise him for? He went to a place where he could win. It's literally the same exact thing. Mike yeah. Trout is it's not like, going to a opposite. place where he could. No, yeah, it's, it's the exact like opposite. It's like, it's like the opposite. 
So now you're now you're mad you're mad at Kevin Durant for doing that, and you're also mad at Mike Trout for not doing that. I'm not mad at him about it. It was his choice. I mean, if but I'm saying like. You don't have Mike Trout on your top three outfielders in the MLB. <laughs> I, another thing I'd like to add, I know it's irrelevant to you guys, but I saw Ronald Acuna play this past year, and he was the most exciting player I've ever seen live in my life. And I've seen Derek Jeter, Alex Rodriguez. Uh, pff, get out of here with that garbage. Um, uh, what, what Alex was I? Rodriguez I've is seen, exciting. Uh yeah, he was back in like 2006 or 7 when he was pimping home runs all the time. I've seen uh Mark Pryor when he wasn't horrible. I've seen Johan Santana during a Cy Young run. I've seen CC Sabathia the year he almost won the MVP with the Brewers. Like I've seen exciting players play. Acuña is so freaking unbelievable to watch in person. I will ride and die with that. And my other two picks were Cody Bellinger and Christian Yelich. So like are you really going to come at me for that? No, but the no, fact that you have Mike Trout, you Mike Trout on there. You lose all your credit for not having Mike Trout on there. Okay, I gotta you are go. Zero points, and may God have mercy on your soul. Yeah, now that nobody's listening because this is no longer the Hawkeye Tailgate Report. This is. Just... <laughs> all righty. Thanks for listening Whoa, to this episode no, I, I, of. I, 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 hey. I've got a Hawkeye thing. All right, go. You can, you can go. This might this might take a minute. So <laughs> I went to the Iowa State wrestling meet. Um, badass. A lot of GoHawk chants. Cyclones were quiet little bitches until uh, the GoHawk thing started. Anyways, during intermission is when I saw that Justice Sullivan signed with uh, Iowa. And so this Iowa State guy next to me, I was like, yeah, do you know Jake Sullivan has a, a son? He's a four-star linebacker. He goes, oh, yeah, he's going to be a legacy. And I was like, he just signed with the Hawkeyes. Instantly, he goes, yeah, well, I mean, Jake Sullivan has burned a lot of bridges around here. He's not really welcome back anymore. <laughs> Fuck you. Like that ass. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, that's funny. Shout out to the Iowa wrestling team for taking down Iowa State. Just keeping the Cyhawk, like, rivalry, if you want to call it that anymore, in Iowa City. Uh, Nelson Brand's going to be a stud. Austin DeSanto. There's going to be a ton of attitude on that team. And, uh,. They're, I thought Tom Brands was a punch dresser in the face at during like the 149 match. They ran over and like got into it. <laughs> really? Uh, Some guy behind me stood up and was he yelled, "Stun him!" <laughs> <laughs> Stun him! Uh, all right, you guys got any other final notes here? I'm going to Nebraska, so pray for me. I'm going to bring some brass knuckles and duct tape. What thoughts and prayers? Yeah. Uh, all right, guys. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Hawkeye Tailgate Report. Uh, subscribe to the show on Twitter or on Podbean or iTunes. Just search the name. Uh, follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Our Twitter names are Go underscore Hawks Iowa for the tw- uh, show's Twitter. My Twitter is Myers underscore Luke. Joey's is Joe Mama two one nine six. Sam's is S A M M M I D D. Space Cowboys is at Mavhawk fourteen. Right? Uh, it's it's not right, but don't follow me. All I do is bitch about the Packers. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, thanks for listening, guys. Let's beat Nebraska. Hopefully pull off an upset in Las Vegas with the basketball team. Happy Thanksgiving and go Hawks. <laughs>